G'day and welcome to What Happens in the Shed and welcome to this video series on making electricity from wood. Rightio, well I finally got to finish the filter so I'm glad to get that out of the way so at least now I can get stuck into the reactor. Yeah so there's a few ways I can go about this I've just got to decide where to start. So I reckon probably uh, my best bet is to start with the hatch. Well, it's kind of good that I learned from my mistakes on the first one. And uh, one of the main things I learned here was that it's very difficult to create a seal on a rubber gasket using a flat surface. So that's why uh, originally I had the uh, rubber seal glued onto this flange here. And then I had the hatch closing on that and it was just virtually impossible to get a seal. So that's why I ended up placing the seal on the back of the hatch door and then that closes on this edge here. So I'm pretty much going to do the same here and not only that, this hatch here it's going to be a lot smaller. So it's going to be smaller and I'm also going to make it simpler. Oh yeah, that's almost spot on. And this one Oh yeah, yep, I can make that work. Whoop. A little bit too much. So this is the hatch opening, this is going to be the hatch door, something like that, I'll just we'll flip it over actually, something like that. So on the back of the door we're going to have the rubber. So first up I think I'll fabricate the retaining channel for the rubber. kind of killing two birds with the one stone with the flat bar that I'm welding around the door. So this is both for stiffening the door but it's also part of the retaining channel. So these pieces of flat bar here, that's for the hatch door to stiffen it up. Also they make up part of the hinges or hinge. So yeah, let's go weld those on and we'll keep going. Oh, 
Rightio, so that's how these fit on the door. I'm sort of doing things on the fly. I haven't actually got any detailed drawings for this. So the detailed plan, it's kind of in my head. Yeah, I just cut up some bits and pieces of steel, sort of try it out, tack things together. And uh, actually, um, I quite like doing it this way. I, I think it's probably not a bad way to develop your fabrication skills. So these bits of round bar, they make up the hatch bolts. That's to bolt the hatch door tight. They're made from 12mm round bar with an M12 nut. Now normally what I would do is I will weld a bit of round bar on top here to make a T-handle. I know I did promise myself that I would keep things simple, but I feel like trying something different. It's a good opportunity to plane my lathe. So got a bit of an idea something a bit different Radio. So what the idea here is, sorry that's a bandsaw in the background, so the idea is these go in, I'll have to raise my voice, these go in here like so, and to this bit here I'm going to attach sort of a round wheel, so I can tighten these up, something like that. So that's going to be the wheel, or the hand wheel, it's just a bit of um, 4 inch pipe. Tell you what, this is turning out to be a lot of trouble just for a bloody handle.
Rightio, so off camera I made up this hinge pin. Um, it's just a bit of 10mm round bar. The top disc here is made of 5mm flat bar, which I cut on a hole saw. So 10mm hole, chamfer the hole, weld it and finish it off on the linisher. So I'm just about to give it a bit of a bluing treatment. And this is where the pin goes. It just goes in a hinge here like so. And, uh, these are the handles. So uh, I'm really happy with how they turn out. Rightio, so all the bits have been painted, the hatch door and the hatch opening. I just painted them in this matte black high temperature paint, the sort of stuff you normally use on exhaust headers. And uh, the bolts or handles, I just painted them in a satin black epoxy enamel. Okay, well, pretty much. Um... Oops, I'll make sure I flip this around the wrong way. I mean, the right way. All right, I'm just going to glue the rubber seals in. Right, yeah, so that's the rubber seal glued in. So I'm just going to let this dry overnight. Yeah, it's looking pretty good from the inside too. It looks like um, it's sitting nicely on the rubber gasket. Yeah, so things have been moving pretty slow with the gasifier, which is quite frustrating at times. That's because um, I, I just haven't had enough time to get stuck in. Over this winter, I've been very busy paving our road and uh, that's been taking up a lot of my time. Um, it is actually quite a massive project, which um, I started back in 2019. So when I've been putting in a full day uh, paving our road, uh, when it comes to late afternoon or evening, uh, basically I've got nothing left in the tank. I'm almost finished with uh, paving the road for this year, uh, since we're now in spring and uh, the weather's starting to get a little bit too hot for that sort of work. So hopefully uh, this spring and also going into summer, I'm hoping to sort of begin to catch up on this, especially late afternoons and evenings, so I can get stuck into this thing. Having gotten the hatch out of the way, that's a big step. Uh, it means that I can start 
from the ground up and start working my way up. It was originally my plan to also have done the floor and some of the bits and pieces for the great agitator in this video, but um, I'm not gonna have time for that. Um, I'll show you why. So this is two mil hot roll sheet steel. And, uh, this is what I'm gonna be using for the floor. Now normally what I do here is uh, I'd cut out the circle using abrasive cone discs like these. And um, I think the time has come really where I've got to move on for this. Yeah, so I bought myself a plasma cutter. This is the Trade Tools brand, Renegade. It was on sale for $379. So yeah, I think this is definitely going to be a huge step up. Look, I've been wanting one of these for years, so yeah, I can't wait to use it. But before I get started on this, really, um, I need one of those circle cutting guides or jigs. Uh, I looked at buying one and they went up towards the $250 and I thought, nah mate, look, I'm not paying that. So I'm going to have a crack at making my own. Yeah, so I reckon that should be good fun. And as a bonus, I get to use my lathe some more. Rightio, well I think that pretty much wraps this one up, so I think we'll end it here. I'm going to have a bit of a scrounge around for some steel for that circuit cutting guide. So until then, thanks for watching, hope to see you again. Cheers.